Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Kirsten Jack. She's the leader of Refresh Ministry. Welcome back, Thank Kirsten. You. You're a mother of five children. Yes. And you have two special needs children. And what are the other children? What are their ages? Uh, my eldest is nearly 21. Yes. Um, a girl and then uh, a boy, 19. Mm -hmm. And as mentioned, uh, the special needs girls, one nearly 17, one 15, and then a son who's 13. Yeah. And you have um, um, had the challenge, quite a lot of challenges in life. And how have you overcome fear? Yeah, fear is one of those things that can really um, grip you, isn't it? Mm. It can really um, diminish your capacity to live life well. And, you know, it, when you ask that question, it makes me think of the scripture, perfect love casts out all fear. And a long time ago, I think it was um, uh, in the year 2000, um, I had this experience where I was given the opportunity to speak somewhere and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to speak on obedience. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that would be a good punchy kind of message. <laughs> and I just sensed in my spirit this unrest that it was supposed to be on love and obedience. Mm. And, and I was unhappy with that, but I, it, it just stuck. Mm. And so I said to God, if you want me to speak on love and obedience, you've got to give me a revelation of love because for me it's just one of those airy-fairy, mm. you know, just um, sweet topics that doesn't have any real grit. Mm. And um, to cut a long story short, I had an encounter with God that mm. night and I felt his presence come on me in the lounge room mm. and I felt love. I was like I was immersed in the love of God. Wow. I'll never forget that experience. And all I remember is I did not want that experience to finish. Um, and it was funny because at the end of that, what I was left with was all I want to do now is obey you, God, to express my love to you. Um, and I couldn't wait for the next opportunity. I thought, you know, I'm going to get back on the road and I'm going to stick to the speed limit, even though I want to speed because I love you, God, and I'm going to be obedient. So this was kind of like, almost like a start of this journey with the Lord where his love was what was guiding me in life. And, and so there's, there's no fear in that place because it's like when you've got his love in you um, and you're trusting in him and you want to express that through obedience, um, fear doesn't have a place. Um, and another thing that, that occurred to me around about that time too was, you know, I felt like, you know, I hadn't been having any success in growing myself in my faith and I'd cried out to God, it's not working me, do it, you grow me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from that point on, you know, I, I just watched as he started to grow me and, and I saw that he was faithful. And because of that, um, I learned trust. And so now when I look at my life now and I look at the challenges, you know, I think about my girls and what's the future going to, you know, be like with them. And, you know, people might say, oh, it's going to be hard. You know, what happens when you're older and, you know, how are you going to cope? I'm like, it doesn't matter because God is leading me and he has always been my provider. Mm -hmm. He has always been faithful. And I've learned from experience that I can trust in him. I can trust in his love. And so I'm so grateful for that because I don't have to be afraid. That's amazing. Yeah. Most people when... Well, when I grew up as a faith person, it was give me this, God, give me that. If you love me, you'll do this and this and, you know, answer all my prayers. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing when you say that you want to serve God, you want to be obedient. Yeah. And, and, and it's just a natural overflow because of what he's put into me. It's like, how could I not want to do that? You love me so much. It's like it's a natural response. Wow. Yeah. So you feel that God loves you for your good for, and for the good of mankind? Yes, and, and, and that's what I love too. It's like his love for me, it doesn't just affect me. Then it enables me to love others. And, you know, he's got a plan for all of us, doesn't he? You know, none of us are an island. Um, he's got assignments for each one of us to do. And uh, with him, we're able to do it. And we all impact um, one another. And when that's infused in love, 
and his love with his enabling, then it's like, well, oh, the sky's the limit. What's he going to do? And it's an adventure. It's an adventure walking with God like that. Yes. Does that um, Bible reading, love is patient, love is kind, really um, ring very true to, for you? It does, actually. And I think, you know, I, when I was a kid, you know, they teach that verse in Bible, um, not Bible school, Sunday school. And you draw the, you know, different things of kindness and, you know, long suffering. And you think, okay, I need to be like that. But when God's love is in you, it's like, well, it comes out. Kindness comes naturally from his love. Um, and peace comes naturally from his love. And so it's always a reminder for me, I need to spend time with the Lord. I need to receive from his love every day. You know, we all leak, don't we? <laughs> None of us are perfect and certainly not me. And I need the Lord every day to fill me so that I can, um, I can be patient, so I can be kind, um, all of those things. Wow. Yeah. Love is sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, amazing. And in today, our society is so much about entitlement. You know, I deserve this. And it seems like the more people have that, the more they're getting unhappy. That's right. And I, one of the things I love about the ways of God, though, is it's so counterintuitive. Um, it's like, you know, if you want to live life for yourself, live life your own way, you can do that, but you're going to be miserable. But one of my um, things that I pray often is, God, teach me your ways. Lead me in your paths. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think about the song, you know, I did it my way. You know, for me personally, I'm like, I want the song of my life to be, I did it God's way. And I'm like, God, what is your way? Teach me. Um, and, you know, it, the things that he teaches me, um, they're hard to learn. And it almost takes almost like a crushing um, and, and pressure, like, you know, like a, a diamond is formed through pressure and heat and all of those things. And I feel like it's been like that for me in my life. There's been so many challenges and so many pressures. But it's like the, the Lord in that then is able to form those things that only he can form, which are beautiful. Um, and so I look at that and I'm like, oh, God, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the things that you've taken me through because of what you're forming in the process. Mm. Wow, that's beautiful. It's great to hear that love is sacrifice and it's giving. On that note, we'll go for a break. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Kirsten Jack. She's the leader of Refresh Ministry. Welcome back, Kirsten. Thank you. You're a mother of five and you're um, a stay-at-home mother. <laughs> yes. Um, which is so unusual for today's society, which is all about you can do it all, you know, you're entitled to do it all and... and to some extent, maybe it's permeated the church where people look for a God who wants to give it everything for them, yeah. you know, uh, give lots of presents to us. But you, know, you did talk a lot about being obedient to God, yeah. which is wonderful. And tell us about your ministry and then the gift of prophecy. Sure. Um, so the ministry that God gave me, he gave me the name Refresh. And um, as I said on the last program, I wanted to call it Refire. Mm. I thought that had a bit more grit to it. Mm. But I'm like, God, I've learned to trust you. I will go with what you say, Refresh. And um, Refresh was launched online during COVID. And we have um, people that will live stream um, from Facebook for half an hour every Tuesday night. Um, worship, um, Bible meditation, prayer, testimony. And really the aim is for that 30 minutes that people can just come in the comfort of their own home and just sit back, you know, maybe with a cup of tea or just lying down on their pillow mm. and just connect with someone else who's in their own home who's loving Jesus and who is connecting with God 
and facilitating an atmosphere of spiritual refreshment. And so it's been such a blessing for God to give me this ministry to carry and to bring, um, not only because I hope that it will bless many people, um, but also just to be able to have that for myself, to have that rhythm of refreshing with him, you know, every Tuesday night. That's amazing. And what have others said about how it's impacted them? Yeah, I had um, a lady reach out to me uh, just yesterday who watched the live stream on Tuesday night and she said that it was just exactly what I needed. I can't tell you how much I needed it at, at this time. And it's such a blessing for me to see that it was, you know, my guest was the one who was speaking and I was facilitating that and to see her being fruitful in that and impacting people. Um, and, and my heart, to be honest, is not just for those who give us the feedback, not just for those who I know who are watching, who are commenting, but the ones who are anonymous, the ones who are, wouldn't step foot in a church, who are going to watch from the privacy of their own home and mm. hopefully see that there's, there's a substance of life here. Mm. There's a substance of hope here that they can't put their finger on, but mm. it's because the Spirit of God is there Fantastic. and because He is bringing His living water which is unique and it's different and it has a, a fragrance, it has a life to it, mm. um, which everyone can sense whether they can understand it or not. Mm. And I'm hoping that that can bless not only mm. Christians but those who are hungry and who are seeking. Mm -hmm. And what happens during that, that period of time where people get refreshed? What, what, what's the program of it? Um, so usually we start with, well, it can look quite different. You know, when I'm leading refresh, I will play um, the whole time. And, you know, I might um, read out some scriptures and just meditate aloud on those. Um, some of our leaders will sing worship songs or some of their original songs. But it's all aimed at being, you know, that refresh is a safe place um, without judgment. This is the word that God gave me for refresh, where people can unburden and be filled up again with his life. And so, you know, some, some guests might minister and pray for people. Um, and, and some might, you know, share encouraging stories. Mm. But it's all aimed at, you know, particularly themes like rest or themes like joy. Those are kind of common themes for refresh. Mm. You know, it's that therapeutic spiritual environment as opposed to, you know, another spiritual environment might be the war room <laughs> where mm. you're praying hard. Uh -huh. This is really a place to just to... <sighs> Receive, I suppose. Receive, so you say? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And... And do people interact with you on the internet? Yes, they do. People will comment live, which I always love. And um, But again, you know, my heart is for those who are watching later, who we will never know about, hmm. but that they can have a window into who God is. You know, I was um, remembering you asked me to speak about prophetic. I had a, um, a vision about a year ago where I saw these glory clouds. I don't often see pictures, but this was very clear and very specific. I saw these big cumulus clouds like over Melbourne. And, and I sensed that this was the presence of God. And in his presence, the qualities that I sensed surprised me. Because I felt that it was like this victorious, jubilant love. Um, but, and it had this, um, this life to it and almost like a, a childlike playfulness mm. and innocence mm. to it and beauty. And I saw it and I saw that this glory cloud was unstoppable and it was imminent mm. and and I reflect on that and I'm like God who you are and what we are stepping into into this next season of church history is profound mm. and significant in mm. a way that the church has not yet fully experienced wow. mm. and so you know I think about that love and the life and and, and the childlikeness to it mm. that was incredible to me mm. and you know and I think of him like that and I think, oh, Lord, let us step into more of that. Mm. You know, just the joy and the spontaneity, the living in the moment, mm. the creativity. Mm. Uh, you know, God is always giving me ideas, you know, of how to bring the presence of God into my home. Mm. Um, you know, ideas you wouldn't expect. Yes. Get rabbits, mm. <laughs> the Lord says to me. <laughs> Like what's rabbits got to do with the presence of God? Yeah. I get the rabbits out of obedience and now we've got all this joy in our home. Wow. We've got a focal point where we all congregate because we love the rabbits. Wow. And it's bringing our family, our special needs family that finds it hard to mm. find areas of commonality with the kids and all these stresses and yet something as simple as rabbits can be so profound yeah. in helping God establish family 
and his presence in our home. Yeah, that's mm. fantastic because we, we can sometimes live in a society which is, you know, cost effective, um, you know, what strategies, what do we achieve by doing this? But, mm. you know, it's it's very much in the head, not into yeah. creating, creating in the moment, loving and yeah. and loving presence. So that's wonderful. Yeah, and prophecy, what would you say for those audience who don't know much what prophecy is? Yeah, it's really, I mean, it's God speaking to us. Yes. And he does. On on that note about God's presence and his speaking to us, we will go for a break. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Kirsten Jack. She's the leader of Refresh Ministry. Welcome back, Kirsten. Thank you. Um, you've had a wonderful life of obedience to God and prophecy, and uh, it's been wonderful that you minister to people through music. And it's also a prophetic word that comes through music, doesn't it? Yes. And a prayer for people. Yep. Yeah. Would you be able to pray for people through the music and as you feel led to share? Because um, it's a very powerful ministry what you've given to, to share with the body of Christ. Thank you. I, I really love to do that. Um, one of my favorite psalms is um, Psalm 84. So I'm just going to, as I play, just invite you who are watching just to close your eyes and um, let the words wash over you. In Psalm 84, it says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, it even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh, they cry out for the living God. And I pause on that word. He's the living God. He's not, he's not a plastic God. He's not just a concept or a thought. But he's living. It's like the difference between a plastic flower and a real one. There's a quality, there's a substance, there's a fragrance, there's a beauty, there's life in the real thing. So God, I thank you that you are the living God. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. words of scripture, their life and their sustenance to us. Jesus says, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And in him is life. And that life is the light of all humankind. And it's different. It's different from what you know if you haven't encountered his life before. It's something that can well up on the inside within you like, like living water <laughs> that refreshes your spirit, that refreshes your soul. His life, I, I, I can't get enough of that word, his life. And I wonder, have you encountered his life? Have you encountered his love? Have you encountered his joy? How about his peace? Holy Spirit, I want to pray for those who are watching right now. I want to thank you for your presence that is here with me. Lord God, you're here. You're here with me always. You are in me and I am in you. 
And it's not on account of my effort, it's not on account of my perfection, but it's on account of who you are. And you desire, you desire to, to live and dwell in each one of us. So God, would you, would you reveal yourself for those who are hungry and those who are thirsty for that living water? Would you reveal your heart of love for them? Would you give them a sense of your peace that takes away anxiety, that gives rest to the soul, that gives rest to the spirit? Would you wrap your arms around us in your love, your great, 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 great love? Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence. I think about all the, the challenges and the difficulties that people are facing. And you know what? God sees you right where you are right now. He's got a closer look at your life and who you are than anybody else, including yourself. And what he sees is who he has made you to be. You might think, oh, he just sees all the junk or all the mistakes, all the failures that I've made. But no, he sees the one that he loves, the one that he created. And, 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 and he loves you so much. So would you put your hand in his? Would you put your trust in him, your creator, who knows you better than you know yourself? Would you trust that his ways are exactly what you need? You might think that living life your own way is the way you're supposed to live in this world. But God's ways are not our ways. His ways are beautiful. So I invite you, I invite you to put your hand in the hand of God. Holy Spirit, come, come and minister to your children. What do you want to say to us, God? Would you speak to hearts? Would you speak to us, God? I invite you to listen. Listen with the, the eyes of, and the ears of your spirit. And say, God, would you speak to me? Would you reveal yourself to me? And I invite you to surrender. Surrender your heart. God of your extravagant and beautiful and generous love. Thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. Thank you. That was beautiful. That prayer was so inspiring. I'm wishing you all the best and thank you for so much for coming to our program. Thank you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Join us next week. Goodbye and God bless you.